Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in these times. So I wanted to do a, a short reply uh, to this video here that was put up by um, Elder Pastor entitled Deuteronomy 2852, Debunking the Myths of the Black Hebrew Israelites. And he, he was inspired to do this video by a video Elder Apostle Ramlob did. Uh, I forgot the title of his video where he focused on this uh, article right here that you see on screen. Uh, Deuteronomy 2868, Debunking the Myths of the Black Hebrew the Black Hebrew Israelites. And uh, this was an article written by uh, David Nachman, I think his name is. Uh, you know, one of the small hat people. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, he said in the article that we that call ourselves Hebrew Israelites, that that's a, you know, that's a myth. We're not, we're not the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. And you notice he says black Hebrew Israelites. No such thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. It's just a Hebrew Israelite. We even have Hebrew Israelites that look like so-called white people, but nobody ever talks about that. You know, they're just focusing on this. They're trying to make us look like a, a black, uh, black supremacy group, like the like the Black Panthers. Or back in the day, you had the Blackstone Rangers. You know, you had back then you had the, the Young Lords. They're trying to link us in with groups like that. When that's definitely not the truth. This is our nationality. We are Hebrew Israelites by nationality, by the seed. We are the the offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. That's who we are. But, you know, they're supposed to do that. These devils are supposed to... Uh, they're supposed to uh, try to throw doubt on our claim according to faith. And according to the scriptures, they're supposed to throw doubt on it. And if you go in the book of uh, the book of Hosea, and uh, even Elder Yashawamba did a response to the same article. So I'm just going to do a little, a little something, something here. Uh, again, book of Hosea. I think it's Hosea, the first chapter. Uh, the book of Hosea 1 and, and 10. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel, in the Hebrew, the word there is sons. For children, the word there is sons. Yet the number of the sons of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. Now here's the point. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. So when you get you get guys like uh, Vocab Malone, you get guys like David Nachman in his article. Essentially, that's what they're saying. They're saying that we are not the people of the Lord. We are not the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And let's not forget, um, you go in the book of Psalms, the 83rd chapter, it said, they have said, come and let us cut them off. Maybe I'll go to that next. Because on a deeper scale, that's the top wicked elite trying to keep us from our true nationality. Because they know once we return back to our true nationality, that they're done. Their rulership is done. I'm talking about the top wicked elite. So, you know, guys like uh, Vocab Malone and David Nachman and, and the like, they're, they're part of an agenda of the wicked elite to keep us away from our true nationality. Okay, because once we wake up to our true nationality, they know they're in trouble. Okay, they know they're going to be exposed. Remember what the Apostle Paul said, that wicked shall be exposed. So all their lies, all their, their lies are being exposed by us through the power and spirit of Yahweh Shai. Okay, so... 
All, all David Nachman is doing with his article is fulfilling prophecy by saying we're not the people. And I'm reading the prophecy right here. Hosea, the first chapter. And you know it ain't talking about the small hat people because they're, they're, you know, they're running around calling themselves Jews, which when you go deeper, there are Israelites among them. But the majority of them, they're calling themselves Jews. And uh, how does this prophecy fit them? Because it's going to be said to the real, the real Jews, you are not the Lord's people. Now, they're running around with that title, and everybody embraces them. I'm talking about the small hat people. They say, yeah, those are the chosen people. Those are the Jews. <laughs> well, Hosea, the first chapter, the 10th verse again. It says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. Who's the Lord's people? The Jews. The Israelites. Right? Which the Jews, the term Jew comes from the head tribe of the Israelites, which is, which is the tribe of Judah. Right? So it's going to be said to the real Jews, the real Israelites, you are not the Lord's people. That's what they're telling us. Right? <laughs> Guys like Dave, uh, uh, David Nachman and Vocab Malone. And other individuals that, that are, you know, you, you're going to see more and more guys coming up saying that we're not the Lord's people, right? So again, it says, in the place, uh, in that, that in the place where it was said unto them, you're not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you're the sons of the living power. By who? By the true prophets of the Lord. And that's, that's part of our main message when we go out there and teach. We're telling the people on the sign who they are, that they're the people of the Lord, they're the sons of the living power, the sons of the living God, which his name is Yahweh. Okay, so Hosea 1 and 10 is definitely being fulfilled on both ends. You have one group telling us that we're not the Lord's people, and you have another group that's telling us that we are the Lord's people. Okay, so, you know, both ends are being fulfilled in that prophecy. Uh... Hosea 1 and 11, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. And that's happening right now. The reason why it says Judah and Israel is because the kingdom was split. You go back to uh, uh, 724 BC. That's when the, the northern kingdom led by uh, the tribe of Ephraim went into Assyrian captivity. Okay. And you had you had that, that uh, split of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Even before that, you had, um, uh, before the northern kingdom went into captivity underneath the Assyrians, you had the split between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. That was shortly after the death of uh, Solomon. All right, Solomon being the father of Rehoboam. All right, Rehoboam took the southern kingdom, which was Judah and the rest of the tribes, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and, and uh, Jeroboam took the northern kingdom, led by the tribe of Ephraim. So there was this great split. So now we're in the time where all the tribes are being gathered together by this word, by this knowledge, by this truth. And this is what we read in here, Hosea 1 11, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land of and they shall come up out of the land. What land? The land of uh, America. Mainly it's talking about America. Now we know that. The Israelites were scattered all over the world. The elect are scattered all over the world. And that's pursuant to Matthew 24 and 30. But the main deliverance, the main deliverance of the Lord's people will take place right here in America. Okay. This is what is meant by they shall come up out of the land. Because the, why? Because they're going to be delivered. That's uh, pursuant to First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. America is, is, is slated for certain destruction, total destruction. By the nuclear miss missiles and the chariots of the Lord. So there's going to be this great deliverance of the elect. The main deliverance of the elect is going to take place right here in America. And they're going to be delivered by what is called so-called UFO. The chariots of the Lord. Okay. And there's all kind of prophecies to prove this. So that's, that is what is meant by they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Now when you look at that term Jezreel. In the Hebrews, Yazari Allah, which means he seed of the power. Jezreel in the Hebrews, Yazari Allah, which means he seed of the power. So it all goes back to the seed. Even the Apostle Paul said that, that the 
uh, counted for the seed. Let's get that so I don't butcher it. I'm roughly paraphrasing what he said because it goes back to the seed. And, and we, and, and, you know, when you go into the scriptures and you go into the prophecies, right, it, it fits us, man. The prophecies of, uh, of slavery, it fits us. The prophecies of the curses, the curses alone. And, you know, what's heavy is when you go in the curses, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it tells us that, uh, as a matter of fact, let me just get this scripture uh, about the seed first. Then I'll go to the one, the one in the curses. Okay. I know it's somewhere in Romans. Yeah, it is right here. Romans the ninth chapter, the eighth verse. Now, back in uh, back in um, back in Hosea, the first chapter, eleven verse, it says, "For great shall be the day of Jezreel." You look up Jezreel in the Hebrews, Yazari Allah, which means he seed of the power. Now here's Apostle Paul talking about the seed which the word seed goes back in the Greek is sperma, which goes back to the sperm, all right? Because we we are the descendants of the sperm of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, okay? And the whole world will acknowledge this, all right? When the Heavenly Father give us that power, you know, that's one thing. When, when the Heavenly Father give us that power, all the nations of the world will acknowledge who we truly are, okay? It's all about that power. And pursuant to acts 1 and 8 the lord said we're going to receive power okay after the holy spirit have come upon us the holy spirit is the understanding of these scriptures so all that's left now is that spiritual power which we which we shall receive begin with the elect of the nation of israel this is romans the ninth chapter the seventh, seventh verse neither because they are the seed of abraham are they all children because abraham had many uh, many sons okay he had at least he had uh, six sons with Keturah. He had one with Hagar, or Hagar, which would be Ishmael, and he had one with uh, Sarah, which would be Isaac. So, I believe he had a total of eight sons altogether. But out of out of all those sons, one was chosen to be part of the chosen line, and that would be Isaac. Hence, the chosen line: Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. Because the chosen line stops with Jacob. Anyway, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. The chosen line went through who? It went through Jacob. It didn't go through Esau. And that's who those small hat people are. The majority of them, even though we have Israelites scattered among them, the majority of them are Edomites. They're of the seed of Esau. So they know this. Their rabbis know. Okay, as a matter of fact, um, uh, quoting a citation from the Encyclo Encyclopedia, I always have trouble saying that word, Encyclopedia Judaica, the 1925 edition, I forgot what page it is, and you can read the citation, uh, Edom is modern Jewry, okay, all you got to do is type that in Google, type in... Uh, Type in the uh, 1925 edition of the Encyclopedia Judaica, uh, where the citation says, Edom is modern Jewry. In other words, the small hat people, the majority of them are Edomites. Okay? So they know, they know their true nationality. You know, some of their top rabbis, they know. But they're trying to claim our nationality because of the benefits that come with being the true people of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, which they're not. They're trying to reclaim those benefits. They're trying to keep those benefits. They're trying to keep that uh, birthright that we're, that we're slated to receive. The true Israelites, the real people of the Lord, were slated to receive a birthright. Okay? That is, they which are the children of the flesh... These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted 
for the seed. So going back to Hosea 1.11, the true seed will gather together. That's Judah and the children of Israel. Another thing about these uh, small hat people, when you, when, you know, they say that they're the Jews. Okay, well, where are the rest of the tribes? Where's the tribe of uh, Issachar? Where's the tribe of Nathalie? Where's the tribe of Simeon? All right, where's the tribe of Ephraim? They can't tell you, man. Okay, because they're not the people. We are the people. We are the Israelites. And they've tried to keep that information from us for hundreds of years. They've tried to keep that information from us. Okay? But now we're, we're being born again. We're being brought back to our true nationality through these, through these scriptures, through this uh, uh, history. We're being brought back to our true nationality. Okay? As a matter of fact, let's get Jeremiah 17 and 4. Let's get the book of Jeremiah, because it was prophesied we would discontinue from our heritage. Uh, let's read it. Jeremiah 17 and 4. It says, And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Right? And what is the heritage? That we're the people of the Lord. We're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. One of the ways we discontinue from our heritage is because it was stolen. It was stolen by another people. And it's no mystery that everything that this so-called white man has, that he stole it, man. How did he get America? Did he vote for it? Did he burn candles for it? Did he march for it? No, he stole it. So he stole, he stole, what didn't he steal? He stole our heritage, man. He stole our nationality. Running around calling himself what we are. And then here it is. We're trying to tell our people to wake up. You're the real Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And they don't want the nationality. They don't want it. They'll actually tell you, I'm not, I ain't no Israelite. That's why the Lord said that our people are gone, man. Uh, uh, was that Jeremiah 5 and 23? They have revolted and gone. That's why two thirds of our people, they got to go, man, because they're gone. The Lord is only waking up the elect right now. Anyway, Jeremiah 17 and 4, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. See, so we lost our heritage, man. Now we're getting it back through this knowledge, through, through this truth. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. And all the other nations are our enemies, beginning with the nation of Edom. Our biggest enemy is the so-called white man. All right, starting with the top banking families. So we're definitely serving them. They're our masters. Through a myriad of contracts they own us, the birth certificate, the driver's license, you name it, man. So we're serving them. So this prophecy, <laughs> this prophecy came to pass. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Furthermore, how will, how will we brought here to the Americas, our forefathers? In cargo slave ships, man. You're going to tell me a monumental event like that is not recorded in the scriptures? <laughs> Come on, man. A horrific event like that? A traumatic event like that? Oh, it's recorded in the scriptures, all right. It's recorded in Deuteronomy. No matter what these small hat people say, no matter what these devils say, one of the examples of, of uh, us being brought into slavery is recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the 68th verse. Okay? When you break it down correctly. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for you have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. Yeah. And, uh, one of the reasons we were sold into slavery, captivity, is because we moved the Heavenly Father to wrath by worshiping other gods, okay? which is uh, one of the uh, uh, commandments. Actually, it's the main commandment. Commandment number one, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. That's what the Heavenly Father said. We're not to have any other gods before him. So we violated that and paid for it by, by being brought into slavery. Okay? Uh, let me just read to you the scripture here. I know it's in uh, Baruch. 
Here it is right here. The book of Baruch, the fourth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. It says, O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to the Heavenly Father are made known unto us. Right, that's, that's this knowledge, this truth, right? Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel, that's the elect. You were sold to the nations. Now, in this article, Nachman, David Nachman is trying to say we were never sold. When you read that article, which I might go into it a little bit. The article which inspired me to do this video, he's, he's saying that we were never sold because nobody bought us. Which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Baruch 4 and 6. You were sold to the nations. And we were actually sold. We were put on, uh, we were put on the auctioning blocks. You know, they, there's so many movies that, that, that show this. Okay, the movie Roots, the uh, Mandingo, Drums. There's just three examples right there of our, our slavery. The slave trade. You have something called the slave trade. Okay. As a matter of fact, if you now in the curses, you go to uh, the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the twenty-eighth chapter. It, one of the curses was that a yoke of iron would be put on us. Right. It clearly says that in the book of Deuteronomy, the twenty-eighth chapter. All you got to do is go to Google and type in yoke of iron, and you'll see what people comes up. As a matter of fact, I'll do it right now. How does that fit the small the small hat people? As a matter of fact, you've seen I've done it in the past. It just came right up. Yoke of iron, right? Now, <laughs> right away, Deuteronomy 28, 48 comes up, which is the scripture. Uh, Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And as you read on, it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thee, or upon thy neck. Right? Now, if we go to uh, images, let's just go to images and see what, see? See what people comes up? That's prophecy right there. That's the Bible prophecy right there. Deuteronomy 28 and 48. So what is David Nachman talking about? Yoke of iron. Was that put on the small hat people? Oh, hell no. And, and while they had that yoke of iron on them, they were sold. They were sold to their new slave masters. Okay? While they had that yoke of iron... Put upon them, they were sold to their new slave masters. There you go, man. You can't get around this. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. <laughs> I didn't even know this would come up. Which one, which one fit the curse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't see no yoke of iron in his neck. There you go. Which one fit the curse? You can't get around the curses. And, and furthermore... Those curses, right? I'm going to go back to Baruch. But those curses were to be a sign upon us to tell us who we are. Deuteronomy 28 and 47, I believe it is. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 28 and 47. Okay, it's not 47. Uh... Actually, it's 46, but I'll begin at 45. Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and, and indeed we're a nation under these curses. All the 12 tribes, begin with the so-called Negro, all the way down to the so-called Mexican. We're under heavy curses, man, brought upon us by the Heavenly Father for our wickedness in the past, for worshiping other gods, okay? That's why... As the scripture has said, it's high time for our people to wake up out of sleep. Okay, you've been sleeping for too long. It's, it's high time you wake up and come back to the real truth, the 100% truth. But we know the only ones that's going to come back is the elect of the nation of Israel. We already know that two-thirds of the nation of Israel, they're not going to come back. They're going to be destroyed and they're going to come back in the kingdom. And that's when they're going to get it right. They're going to be children of the one-third. So we understand the, what's happening, what the Heavenly Father is doing. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. 
because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments. One of the main commandments is thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Boy, did we violate that. Uh, and, and the majority of our people are violating, violating it to this very day. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments and his statutes which I command thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. They, they mean what? The curses. The curses are upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Meaning for an age upon thy seed. Right? So that's how you know who the children of Israel are. Among the many, uh, the many ways you would know, one of those ways is the curses. That's why it says, they, they, meaning the curses, shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder. A sign of what? A sign that you are the Hebrew Israelites. That we are the Hebrew Israelites. Because of these damn curses. Okay? Which our people cannot escape. You cannot, you cannot escape those curses. A lot of our people try to. Right? They try to escape the curses. But they can't escape it. Because eventually the curses will get you. Okay? There's a curse where it says, uh, Curse shall thou be when thou comest in, Curse shall thou be when thou goest out. I Meaning when you die. You're born into a curse, you die in that same curse. We can't escape the curses, man. Because they're a sign of who we are, that we're the Hebrew Israelites. Like it says here, Deuteronomy 28, 46, And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. Many of our people wonder why they're in this condition. So much so that they they say, uh, oh, the, the heavenly father don't, the heavenly father don't like me. The heavenly father hates me. That's why I'm in this condition. And the answer is no. <laughs> heavenly father don't hate us, okay? Because we're his chosen people. He has not forgotten about us. That's why he, he allowed his son to sacrifice himself for us. Beginning with the elect, okay? There's a scripture. Uh, how's it go? Um, Amos. Uh, I have loved you. Bear with me for a minute. But because of the curses, our people are saying, no, the Lord don't love me. Look at the condition that I'm in. Living here in this ghetto. You know, I'm catching all kind of hell, and I don't understand why. Like the scripture said, the curses shall be upon you for what? For a wonder. Hey, it is right here. Malachi, it's actually in Malachi, not Amos. Malachi 1 and 1, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? See, because of we're under those curses that the Lord said he would put on us for our disobedience and wickedness. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. See, we represent Jacob. We're of that seed. So no matter what we're going through, the Heavenly Father still loves us, man. And he's really going to show that love when he, bring, when he uh, removes those curses from us. As a matter of fact, yet I love Jacob and I hated Esau, right? So when he removes those curses from us, let's go to Lamentations. Let me show you what's written in Lamentations. Because he's going to remove the curses from us. Lamentations, the fourth chapter, and he's going to put those curses... Upon all the other nations that, that plagued us. Number one nation being Esau, Edom. This is Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also, that's the curses, the cup. Also shall pass through unto thee, and thou shalt be drunken, and shall make thyself naked, meaning exposed. And they're being exposed right now. The curses is coming on to Esau, Edom. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. What's the punishment of our iniquity? The curses. The curses that would be a sign unto us of who we are. Right? The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Remember the yoke of iron? Slavery? Remember that? He will no more carry thee away into captivity. That's slavery, people. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. Uh oh, it's Edom's turn. He will discover thy sins. So those curses are going to be put now on all the other nations, beginning with the nation of Edom, the same curses that we went through. 
Let's get the book of Deuteronomy 30 and 7. Let's see if that's not so. Deuteronomy 30 and 7. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses. So it gets even more explicit. And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. See? And who is that? All the other nations, man. Beginning with the nation of Edom. Okay? So, let's just go back to uh, Baruch. All right, so according to David Nachman, we are never sold, right? Well, Baruch 4 and 6 says, Ye were sold to the nations not for your destruction, but because you moved the Heavenly Father to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies, as in the cargo slave ships. For ye provoked for ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to the Most High. See? See? So that's why we went into slavery. That's why we went into captivity. You have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up. And you, and you have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. See? And the whole chapter is good, man. So that was Baruch, the fourth chapter. Now, before I go, what I wanted to show you in this article, because this guy doesn't believe that, according to the small hat guy, David Nachman, he doesn't believe that this is his article right here, as you can see here, written uh, February 11th, 2019, debunking the myths of the black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> there we go with that term, black. He doesn't believe that America is, is Babylon the Great. So right there, you already know that this guy is lost. Okay, and I'll show it to you. Yeah, this is the part of the article where he says we were never sold. We were never sold because it says there will be no buyer. They don't even understand that. When it says no man shall buy you, meaning no man shall save you. Our Savior is not coming back as a man. It tells us that in Isaiah the 47 chapter. I will not meet thee as a man. That's our Savior is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming back as this conquering power. Along with the angels. Okay. Bear with me for a minute. I'm trying to find. Yeah, he's talking about Abba Bivens right here. Man named Abba Bivens along with his seven misguided and equally imagined, imagined, imaginative companions named the seven. Yeah, I was trying to find the part. I should have labeled it. But basically in this article, he's trying to say that America is basically not Babylon the Great. Which lets you know that he, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. There it is right here. I think I found it. Uh... It actually means that instead of being sent into literal Egypt, as the verse clearly describes, it wasn't literal Egypt. <laughs> it says Egypt again by ships. You don't need to leave the land of Israel to go into Egypt. You don't need ships. 
Okay, our forefathers walked down into Egypt. Jacob and the 70 souls. Show you this guy don't know what the hell he's talking about. This Egypt in Deuteronomy 28 and 68 is a spiritual Egypt. Which that's what America is. America is known as the new Egypt. If we go in the book of... Uh, what is that? Uh, Revelation? The 11th chapter? Daphne, for a minute. Revelation, the 11th chapter. It is right here. Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is talking about America. Dead bodies meaning they're dead to their nationality. They're dead to the understanding of these scriptures. They're dead to the truth of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. In the book of Proverbs, excuse me, in the book of Proverbs 21 and 16, it says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's Proverbs 21 and 16. So when it says they're dead bodies, these are individuals that are dead to their nationality, spiritually dead. So it says their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The majority of the Israelites are right here in, in America, in the great city. And the majority of them are dead. They, they have no idea who they are. They have no idea of this truth. Okay? Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is, is called Sodom and Egypt. So you go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. That's a spiritual Egypt right there, which we were brought into, which is America. America is spiritually known as Egypt because America carries all the symbols of the ancient Egyptian empire. You have something called the Washington Monument. The Washington Monument is actually an Egyptian obelisk. Okay? So this place is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Sodom because of Sodom was known for what? Homosexuality and lesbianism. And uh, Egypt... The word Egypt ties into what? Ties into bondage. Okay? It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Right, X'd out. Our Lord was X'd out. The image of our Lord being a so-called white man was put up. When the Bible clearly tells us that our Lord looks like a so-called black man, a so-called Negro, if you will complete with dark skin and woolly hair. And then as you read on, and day of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, which is a period of time we've been over here in the, in the Americas, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Right, right, because they're not physically dead. They're spiritually dead. And that's our people. Our people are dead, man. Even Yahweh Shai, what, what do you think he, he meant when he made the statement, let the dead bury their dead? <laughs> Our Lord clearly made that statement. Let the dead bury their dead. Because you have some something called spiritually dead. Again, Proverbs 21 and 16. I quoted it, but I'm going to go to it. So you can see for yourself. Proverbs 21 and 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead, their dead bodies, okay? So now you know what it's talking about. So America is definitely Egypt, spiritually known as Egypt, right? Uh, problem, so I'm going back to the article, problem solved. It actually means that instead of being sent into literal Egypt, as the verse clearly describes, which he doesn't understand the verse. And the reason why he doesn't understand, because he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. There are certain scriptures where it's written in a metaphorical uh, term. It's written in an allegorical form. And it takes, you have to have the Holy Spirit for you to understand it. Okay. Which clearly this David Nachman does not have the Holy Spirit. It is actually saying you will be going back into bondage. Yeah, which we came into bondage right here in America. Our forefathers did. Black Hebrew Israelites also, and, and they keep saying black Hebrew Israelites. 
Now we got Hebrew Israelites. We got brothers right now in our group, Great Millstone, that look like straight up so-called white people. Nobody talks about them. Would you consider them being black Hebrew Israelites? So that lets you know that term right there is, is, is a narrative that they're trying to push. They're trying to make it look like we're a, a black uh, militant group. Okay? Like the Black Panthers, like I said earlier. No such thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. And we're not black. We're, sh we're different shades of brown. You look up the word black, it means negative, void of light. So once again, this guy is a devil, man. David Nachman. He's nothing but a fucking devil. Black Hebrew Israelites also commonly teach that when the Bible is speaking of ba Babylon, it actually means America. It does mean America. Babylon means confusion. That's what America is, the land of confusion. Hell, even the, if, even, even the group Genesis knew that. That's why they did the song, This is the Land of Confusion. Okay? America is the land of confusion. The word America means bitter. And America definitely is Babylon the Great. That's the Babylon the Great that Apostle John on the island of Patmos saw that is slated for great destruction. It actually means America. This kind of biblical thought does not put much weight into context or logic, but naive hope and blind faith. See? So this guy, David Nachman, doesn't believe that America is Babylon the Great. So that's it, man. He's done, man. You don't have to listen to him. He's done, okay? All right, so with that, hopefully you were edified. Next video.